Welcome back is off the press on the breakfast this morning on Plus TV Africa. As always, we'll take you through the pages of the national dailies. We have our guest who's on standby. He joins us this morning, Tunde Kolawale. It's good to have you join us, Tunde Kolawale. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, my sister. Thanks for having me. It's all right. Uh, let's take a look at the Nigerian Tribune, uh, the, the page of uh, the front page of the Nigerian Tribune this morning, and the banner caption talks about the Abuja Kaduna train attack. Youths donate blood. Terrorists contact families. Uh, that's boldly written. How bureaucracy costs train attack. Amechi is quoted on that. That's uh, the Minister of Transport, uh, Rotimi Amechi. Attack questions are collective ability to govern. Uh, this is what governors quoted to say or government reps blast service chiefs over a failure to honor invitation. Federal government must prosecute indicted 1,200 terror sponsors. Suspects now. That's what Falana is quoted to say. Well, it's interesting. Uh, let's see how all of this unfolds. Federal government approves procurement of Ile. Uh, I beg your pardon. Federal government approves procurement of the LIE dictators. Lie dictator. uh, okay, that's a lie dictator. Night Vision Google for NDLEA. And uh, that actually broke it yesterday. How much are we looking at about? A billion naira? <laughs> mm. You also have 2023 presidency. Blackmail cannot stop North from uh, filing in candidates. A northern coalition is quoted. Afebe Babalola's colon. You have the judiciary must remain independent. And just before we move away from the Nigerian Tribune, you have FRIS contributed 59.45% of revenue shared by uh, FAAC monthly in 2021. That's FAC. And Rivers Pollution or SHU declares war on illegal miners. This is what you find also. Reps Committee uncovers 300 billion on claim funds in banks. And court dismisses no case submission by. Uh, they doing others talking about the OAU students murder trial. Uh, these are some of the uh, headlines uh, on the Nigerian Tribune. A door assembly passes the anti open grazing bill. That's it this morning on the Tribune. All right, from the Tribune, we move on next to uh, the leadership uh, newspaper this morning. The lead story uh, for the leadership uh, could do in a train attack. We have failed. Governors apologize to victims with some riders there. Say attack questions their capacity to govern. Bandits contact families of kidnap uh, victims. Kill nine security operatives in Niger. Reps berate service chiefs over incessant attacks. Uh, 13 women, children drown while fleeing. Wow, from terrorists, that's a sad one. Just above that story on the blue strip there, 2023, APC mounting pressure on INEC to shift election. PG or PDP alleges Senate asks DSTV Star Times others to cut tariffs. Uh, Senate asks DSTV Star Times others to cut tariff. I have 12 months to deliver as APC chairman. Adamu, uh, 2023 Udom, higher to then Ohabonwa peak PDP forms. Ramadan, stakeholders caution Muslim preachers against provocative sermon. Above the masthead, federal government acquires lie detectors, night vision goggles for the NDLEA. U.S. waves interview for non-immigrant visa. Uh, those are the stories uh, you can find on the front page of the Leadership newspaper this morning. Away from the Leadership, we'll take a quick look at the Punch newspaper. On the front page of the Punch, you find Arufai Capet's military. ACF laments defense headquarters fails to deploy Tokano in the northwest. Says bandits territory known to troops and should be declared war zone. Uh, that's one of the riders underneath the board caption. Another rider says, Nigeria Air Force to escort passenger trains with jets, says Amechi. 
Uh, that's the Minister of Transport. Rotimia made sure on that. Reps Fume, as Service Chief's Minister failed to appear before panel, uh, talking about the train attack and that said, away from that uh, headline, you also have Senate demands downward pay TV tariff review, uh, others hike probe. Uh, that's what we talked about on Top Trending this morning. And you still have more interesting headlines on the Punch newspaper. NAVDA gets a WHO certification plans vaccine laboratory June. Uh, this is what you find. Report of stepping down for Atiku Mischievous, Saraki Tambawal, and Mohammed is quoted. And you have Senate threatens Akpabio. NDDC boss arrest over 2.2 billion naira uh, contracts fees. And beneath uh, the page of the Punch newspaper, 20 Niger residents fleeing bandit attack in overload boat uh, drown. This is really, really sad. Carry rejects prison food inmates excited by XRIT boss presence. <laughs> and uh, you find uh, headers adamant southern governors fail to enforce anti open grazing law. And U.S. Embassy in Abuja begins interview waiver for visa renewal. Face masks now an optional COVID-19 restriction uh, go soon. That's what the federal government is quoted to say. And does it mean that, uh, you know, the virus has actually left us? And this is some of the headlines on the Punch newspaper. All right, the final one we are reviewing this morning is um, the Nation newspaper. All right, uh, the main story there, uh, quickly. A drain attack, terrorists contact them, hostages and families. Uh, that's uh, the lead story for this morning. No room for fail uh, no room for failure, says APC chair. That's above the masthead of the nation. A bandits killed 23, abduct many in Kaduna village. Gunmen came in numbers. Other stories on the nation. OAU student um, Adidoi others have case to answer. Pupil dies, 15 injured in Undo school bus fire. Uh, those are the stories uh, we will take on the nation newspaper. I guess we just have to start with an analyst now. Mercy. Tunde Kala Wale, it's good to have you join us once again. Uh, we appreciate your time and thoughts as always. Thanks for having me once again. All right, so um, which of the headlines interest you as we went through the pages of our national dailies this morning? Well, uh, perhaps uh, we should begin uh, with. Uh, the attack on the, the train that applies the Abuja Kaduna route. In my, in my humble opinion, in my humble opinion, there has always been a threat on that route. In fact, it has been reported in the papers in the past that there has been an attack on that route. But the government, especially at the federal level, the Ministry of Transport, have always denied that that terrorist is vulnerable to bandit attacks. If we had paid attention to some of those indicators, if we had paid attention to securing that route, this last attack that took place ought not to have taken place at all. In some other countries of the world, what usually happens is that certain persons are employed and given certain number of kilometers of uh, the rail track to monitor, to check on it, find out whether dangerous objects have been dropped along the, the rail line, whether certain persons might be planning attack, and when they go back to their offices, they write reports, and that guides the security people on what measures to take. It doesn't appear to me that we have made any serious effort to secure that route. The whole thing looks like a watching an Italian mafia film. If I would say, I only read about train attack 
being carried out by the mafia in countries like Italy and not in real life. So that is happening in Nigeria today. It's a serious indictment, not just on the Ministry of Transport, but also all the security chiefs and all those who have responsibility to protect the lives and property of the average Nigerian people. All right, about if we were serious, it mm. would have started rolling in the Ministry of Transport by now. All right, if uh, we are a serious nation, okay, it would have started rolling in all the security agencies. All right, but it's a you can imagine how that sadly this attack has been. A young medical doctor lost his life, labor leaders lost their lives, and so many other. Very, very important people. All right, Barista Kolawale, let's uh, move away from the Kaduna train attack. In as much as, uh, you know, it is a very, very uh, sudden, or saddening one, uh, the other writers to that story, you know, the governors have come out to say that they failed um, the resident and they've apologized. And uh, most people are saying the apology is not really uh, good enough, uh, that they should have um, been more proactive. But let's look at other stories that are making headlines. On the leadership, uh, Senate asks uh, DSTV Star Times others to cut tariffs. How do you react to all of that? Because these arbitrary increases and um, the Senate is also calling for pay-per-view. How workable is this, Mr. Kolawale? Sorry, I didn't quite get that. All right, uh, the Senate asks uh, DSTV Star Times others to cut tariffs. Okay. Yes, and um, they also, <laughs> uh, you know, calling for a pay per view from these uh, pay TV operators. How do you see uh, the workability of that, and, and just how do you react to it generally? That is another very tragic uh, reminder of what we have done to ourselves as a nation. You will remember that during the military rule, the military didn't allow the mass media in the country to go. They were afraid of the newspapers, they were afraid of the radio, they were afraid of television. They will not issue licenses for people to run television stations, for people to run radio stations. If we had given our people the opportunity to grow that sector of the Nigerian economy, would there have been the need for foreign television houses to come to Nigeria and start setting up cable television that rips us off? that collect, I mean, that takes money from us without lending as much service as the other relations should lend us. Why should people pay for programs they never saw and they never watched? Nigeria was where television first started in Africa in 1959 and not South Africa that has brought the DSTV to this country. So, what I would do, uh, recommend, is to say there is the need for laws to further liberalize that sector of the Nigerian economy, to empower Nigerians to set up television radio stations that can cover the whole of the country, that can transmit all over the world, just like the CNN does, just like the CBS does, just like Radio France does. Because what we are still doing today, we give licenses to people to run radio, to run television. But so, so uh, Tunde Kola Wale, Tunde Kola Wale yes, in, in the interim, we're asking that as much as that uh, suggestion is a fantastic one, but this is the action and this is a call of uh, lawmakers asking that uh, the cut down on, you know, the prices. And that's on the one hand in terms of dropping the prices looking at our current reality right now and on 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 another suggestion or another issue they are looking at is the fact that people should pay what the view so pay the view rather than the monthly payment where uh, there are several factors uh, that allow people not to even view uh, the probably might just pay for services they're not viewing so we're asking your thoughts on this 
Uh, one, the, the lawmakers are asking that the federal government, uh, you know, should move ahead and ensure that we have the pay-per-view uh, services for those who are subscribing, and they should also drop down the prices. Uh, the principle of uh, capitalism is that it is the forces of supply and demand that will dictate the price. The legislator or the executive of government cannot sit in the, the accusing offices and begin to dictate to this service provider. It doesn't work that way. What I am suggesting and recommending is that we empower our own people to compete effectively with all these funny media houses. If there is good competition, it will fall down the price. It is because DSTV, for example, is like a monopoly in Nigeria. That is why they can dictate at what rate you subscribe and ensure that you pay for even programs you never watch. That is the way to go, not to start dictating prices. The forces of supply and demand, it is the market that will determine what prices, goods and services are sold. The people who are proposing this are not uh, taking cognizance of the principles of capitalism and then uh, the market forces. All right, Tunde Kalawale, um, let's also look at another um, issue here on uh, the Punch newspaper quickly uh, just before we move away. Uh, Aerofy Capets, the military following the train attack and the AC have actually lamented. The defense headquarters or defense headquarters fails to deploy uh, to Kano in the northwest. Now it says that uh, bandits territory known to troops and should be declared war zone. Uh, you also have another rider saying Nigeria Air Force to escort uh, the passengers train with jets. This is a solution that the minister has proposed. What are your thoughts on all of this? Well, uh, honestly speaking, when Mr. Rufai speaks this way, I begin to wonder what effort he himself has made to ensure that there is peace, there is security that the lives and property of the Kaduna State people are safe. In my humble opinion, his performance in that area has been catastrophic. At the time, he said he paid some full and bandits with sums of money to stop carrying out attacks in Kaduna State. At the time, he said he was going to reconcile the people of Southern Kaduna with the people of Northern Kaduna, as he succeeded in that area, almost on a daily basis, under Mr. Rufai's watch, people are, people are killed, people are maimed, people are kidnapped, people disappear into thin air, and are never seen again. So with his statement, Mr. Rufai is trying to remove the speck in somebody else's eyes. When there is a way lock in his own eyes. So, while I agree that the security chiefs haven't done too well in providing security for the rights and property of the Nigerian people, I don't think it lies in the mouth of Mr. Rufai to start indicting, to start recommending, to start prescribing solutions to the insecurity that we have along those rail corridors and in Kaduna in particular. When I have continued to say this, when a nation is uh, corrupt, all faces of its life will also get rotten. The weaknesses, the fault lines that we see in our different security agencies is a manifestation of the cancer of corruption that has been ravaging this country. What do you expect when you have police officers who deal in cocaine? What do you expect when you have police officers who are blocked with Yahoo Yahoo boys? What do you expect 
when the old GOT of an army command is asked to transport money from one end to the other, and the money gets disappeared in transit, what do you expect when an organization like the, like the PSF goes around blackmailing, lying, and terrorizing Nigerians rather than concentrate on their core responsibility of preserving the lives and property of the average Nigerian person? So, Mr. Rufai should say that to, to the Marines. He has done a signaling terribly when it comes to providing security, not just for the people of the state, but for the people around that environment. The proposal to use um, escorts, helicopters, or whatever, drones, and all that, to begin to escort trains from Abuja to Kaduna, well, it's uh, not impossible. With technology, you can do some of those things. But I don't think that is the final solution to this problem. The final solution will be to root out the bandits wherever they may be, and also get at those who are sponsoring this insecurity all over the country. We have been in this uh, quagmire for more than 10 years. And by now, the security chiefs should have been able to infiltrate the rank and file of the bandits, whether they are operating in the urban areas or they are operating in the rural areas. Okay, um, uh, to the caller, Wale, um, let's just yes, also look at another issue. I mean, because that's, uh, you know, one of the concerns of Erufai. Exactly. But, uh, looking yeah. at the suggestion as a way because i mean there's a lot of back and forth following this attack and uh, looking at you know some of the conversations surrounding all of this this is not the first time this attack is happening this is not the first exactly. time concerns have been raised as regards uh, the fact that you know the kaduna abuja uh, road is actually not very oh. safe for people okay. and all of the things that actually ha happen around but um, the, the minister of uh, transport is saying that we will probably have the jets escorting this train as you know the go ahead what do you think about this no that is a funny proposal you and i know the cost of uh, flying a jet when you have to fuel a jet the engineers will be there and then you also have two pilots. That will be too cost. I mean, it will be too expensive to run that rail corridor. If every trip that the rail makes, you have to escort it with a jet. And don't also forget that the bandits have also acquired missiles with which they can bring down any jet that is flying on the Nigerian airspace. So, you might be kind of um, bidding for a double, a double tragedy in which your price, I mean your debt can be brought down by the bandit and also the rail equally attacked. We need to think deeper about intelligence gathering, about employing moles to travel, to be traversing, to be monitoring what happens along that rail corridor and passing the information they get to the security chiefs who must be compelled to act upon them so, so are you saying that this is this, this is expensive are you saying that this idea of having the uh, nigerian air force escort passengers while they're on it the train is, is expensive or it's it uh, be funny expensive but, but it, it, i mean practical. whatever would it whatever it would take to you know preserve the lives of nigerians it would, it would, but the truth of the matter is that, uh, is it sustainable? You will ask yourself, how much will people now have to pay for a fare from Abuja to Kaduna and from Kaduna to Abuja? If you increase the cost of running that rail corridor, it's not sustainable at all. It is only in of few occasions that you do or that you carry out that kind of exercise. It can be a daily affair. 
Once you start to do it on a daily basis, the bandit will also find a way to circumvent or to make sure that it doesn't work, either by shooting down your jet or by passing some other means of attacking the train. And the train and the passengers in there, they could even begin to wait for you at the departure point or where the passengers will disembark. I think we need to do better than that. All right, Barista Kolaole, let's uh, move on to other stories um, in um, the dailies. Uh, uh, this story spreads across um, some newspapers, but let's take it from the leadership. Uh, federal government um, acquires lie detectors, night vision goggles for the NDLAA. In your opinion, is it a step in the right direction or is it another way of um, getting money from the system? For me, I think that's another waste of money. The NDL don't require to carry out operations at night. The only area in which they probably go into the bush are for those who grow cannabis, those who grow in their hem. And you don't need to go to those places where Indians are grown at night. Such operations are best carried out during the day. After you have gathered sufficient intelligence as the guy where the farm are located. Furthermore, with my experience as a criminal trial lawyer, I have found out that most people deal in drugs. They hardly tell lies of their activities when they are arrested, when they are apprehended. In fact, most times, they go to court and plead the uh, guilty so that they can get lighter sentence. They will not want to waste the time of the court so that the full rigors of the law is not visited on them. Furthermore, a light detector is not a full proof. There are people who have the wherewithal to tell lies or defy or make a mess of whatever light detectors you might have applied to them. I think it would have been better for the NDLA to invest more on intelligence gathering, on vehicle for the operation, on body armor, and some of these other light weapons that will make their people mobile. In fact, intelligence gathering is more important there are all these night nice goggles and what have you. All right, thank it's you a so drain. Mm. Certain persons just uh, using the opportunity to spend funny cars with something right, on so equipment much, that is mm. never likely mm. to be too useful for the NDLA. All right, thank you so much, uh, Barista Kolaole, uh, Tunde Kolaole, for your time. And um, uh, we do appreciate it um, always uh, when you uh, bring uh, these uh, wonderful insights um, to the discussion. We do say thank you and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for having me. All right, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. That's as much as we can take of the press. Uh, We'll go back in history today and see what happened today. And when we come back, we'll be taking our first conversation for the day. Stay with us. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa.